We hope you are blessed by our worship service. And once again, welcome to Tala Family Church. For anyone that's in the area of Tala, you can log on to our Facebook page on uh, Tala Family Church and all the information about where we are and um, how to get there is there. Or if you want to send a private message, feel free to do so as well. But today we're going to look at the book of Luke and we're going to look at Luke chapter 21. And um, a lot, there's a lot contained in this chapter um, regarding different things. It goes from uh, talking about the, the widow who gives all she has to Jesus then speaking about the future and, and the end times. Jesus speaking about his return. And his also is um, when he tells us to remain watchful in the end, in the end of the chapter as well. So a uh, very, very good scripture that, you know, a lot of us um, in churches use. And something that's a um, really great story of love. In chapter 21 of verse 1 it says, And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. Talking about Jesus. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all of these out of their abundance have put in offerings to God. But she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. And I know a lot of us as pastors and leaders will talk about this when it comes to toys and offering and in giving in a church and what jesus is, is is pointing out here is that it wasn't the actual amount she gave but it was the heart and and the attitude in which she gave and i believe it's something that every single one of us that serve god on a daily basis can try to develop and have the attitude that this this poor widow had that when it came time to give to god that she gave everything. She gave out of, of her poverty. And sometimes we might not have a lot. And it can also concern our gifts and, and the way we speak. And sometimes we might feel like we haven't got a lot to give. But with that little that we give. With the abundance and of, of our hearts. And the condition and the attitude of our heart. Is that when we give like this of our time. Of our energy. Of our finances. This is where God blesses our lives. Jesus noted this to the disciples. Look, so many people given here today out of what they have. But here's a woman that is given out of poverty. And as, as I said, we can sometimes think, I haven't really got a lot to offer. I don't, I'm not really skilled in speaking. I'm not really skilled in, in talking to people and, and reaching out. But with the little that we have sometimes... That we think is, is not a lot. That's when we have that attitude that this, this widow had. That no matter how small it is. Or how insignificant sometimes it can feel. That with the little that we have. God can make a lot. And use a lot with what we're able to give. Remember it's not the amount. But it's the attitude and the way in which we give. Of our time. Of our energy. Of our finances. Then Jesus goes on. And starts to begin to tell. About the future here. In 21 verse 5. Then as he spoke. Then as some spoke in the temple. How it was adorned with beautiful stones. And donations. He said these things which you see. The days will come. Which not one stone shall be left. Upon another. That shall not be thrown down. So they asked him saying, teacher, when will these things be and what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? So always the disciples were trying to find out when's this going to happen? You're telling us that this building is going to be destroyed. But when is it going to happen? What time? What hour? But listen to what Jesus said. Do not be deceived for many will come in my name saying, I am he. The time has drawn near. Therefore do not go after them. So Jesus is telling the, 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 the disciples. People are going to come and say it's going to be this time and that time. And we know that no one knows the time nor the hour when Jesus is coming back. 
And so Jesus was saying this. Don't pay attention to people that are saying it's going to be this time and that time. But more so watch out for this. In verse 9. When you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. For these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. So Jesus gives them a, a, little, a little insight that when these things start to happen, it's a sign of it's on the way. Not it's going to happen, but these are signs that it's on the way. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and prisons. You will brought before kings, rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you mouth and wisdom, which will all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. So what Jesus is telling them here is that, look, wars are going to happen. Famine are going to happen. You're going to be persecuted for my name's sake. So when that happens, don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't be worrying, thinking, I'm going to be put in front of this judge or in front of this person. I'm going to be persecuted. Why, how am I going to talk about this and how am I going to get out of this? Jesus says, when these things happen, don't be afraid about what you're going to say. Because I will put the words in your mouth what to say. Nobody will be able to contradict or resist because the words will be coming from God. It goes on to say in verse 16. You will, betrayed, you will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. And you will be hate, hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair on your head shall be lost. By your patience possess your souls. So here the talks about that even our families were torn against us. And I know for a lot of, of, of um, different people in church, sometimes when the first person out of a family comes to church and gets saved, the rest of the family look at them and think, there's something wrong with you, you're going to church. Or what are you doing going to that place? And I've seen it over the years that families have actually turned against uh, men and women that have attended church because they, they, it's, I don't know, I can't explain it, but people will turn against um, family members at time when they come to church. And so Jesus was telling them that this is what's going to happen in the future, that your family will turn against you and that's why we need to pray for our families to get saved. It goes on to say that not a hair on your head shall be lost. Now thank God that it's talking about hair not being lost. Because as you can see, starting to lose a bit myself. <laughs> so what Jesus is sort of saying is not to worry about it. Because he's going to take care of it. With patience, that's how it's going to happen. In verse 20, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let loose who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of four depart. So all, all these scriptures here is talking about the future and the end times. And Jesus is just telling them not to be worrying about it. You know, when the time comes... These are signs of what's to come. But he never specifically says when it's going to happen. And so Jesus is telling us and, and we continue to preach this message that we don't know the time or the hour. And we don't focus on when the end is coming. We continue to live our lives, you know, as, as men and women of God. Um, forgive me if I'm being dis disrespectful. But we don't have any uh, underground bunkers out the back. You ever see them doomsday preppers and all? Praise the Lord for them, amen. They're getting ready for the end times. But in a way, Jesus was trying to say to us that, you know, when the time comes, 
it's it's all in God's time and when the end comes nobody knows the time or the hour so continue on with our lives and live our lives as best we can because we can't worry about it and think oh the end is near and we know we know about the end times but we don't walk through our everyday lives thinking could be over tomorrow you know could be over the next day no we live our lives as normal knowing these things will happen in the future but we continue to live our lives as normal then the next part of the luke 21 and verse 25 jesus tells them about jesus talks about his return and once again he says there will be signs in the sun the moon and the stars and on the earth the stress of nations with perplexity the seas and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory oh when that day comes praise god amen we might not see it our children might see it that day will come but we need to keep living our lives as as men and women of god knowing that that day is eventually going to come but we don't look out our door every day and look up at the cloud and listen out for the trumpet sounding we continue to live our lives now when these things begin to happen look up and lift up your heads because redemption draws near so jesus explains about his return there will be signs of his return but still we won't know the time or the hour but we still have to continue to live our lives as men and women of god and not open up the door every morning is it today god see is the clouds separating and is jesus coming back listening out when we hear the trumpet is this the second coming no we know what's going to happen but we continue to live our lives as men and women of god then jesus speaks a parable look at the fig tree and all the trees when they are already budding you see and know for yourself that summer is now near so you also when you see things happening know that the kingdom of god is near assuredly i say to you this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away so that's jesus telling us once again there will be science when you see fig trees and, and trees budding you know that summer's on the way but you will also see things happening that will be signs that the kingdom and the end times are coming but as i said again jesus and that's not what we focus on in our everyday lives we speak about it we know about it but we continue to live our lives as men and women of god and not be focused on when the end is coming many a preacher has got up and said the end the end is near you know wars are happening this is happening nobody knows the time or the hour that the second coming happens so we continue to live our lives there will be signs and there will be things happening but at the end of the day we know that we continue to live our lives watch out for the signs but do not get caught up in in in, in that thinking because a lot of people do as i said there, there's people all over the world with underground tunnels they've stocked up bunkers with food with, with, with stuff that they need and you know we can't be focused on that we have to be focused on our everyday lives we know what's happening we know that there's going to be a second coming but we continue to live our lives as men and women of god every single day focused on the lord focused on the vision and the plan that god has for our lives and yes we know that one day jesus will come back but we don't stay focused on that i hope i'm making sense when i talk about that so then jesus comes on and tells us in verse 34 but take heed lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the cares of life then that day come on you unexpectedly 
for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things which will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. And in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet. Then early in the morning all the people came to the temple to hear him. So a lot contained in Luke 21. And I hope you are blessed by the worship and by the teaching. As I said, we know the second coming. We know about the end times. But we do not focus clearly on that. Because there's many other issues in life, in our daily lives, in our walk with God that we take care of. And we can't be them doomsday preppers that have the bunker out the back filled with food, water and all them things. We know what's coming. It mightn't be in our generation or the next generation. But Jesus will eventually come back. And we just have to be watchful, prayerful and continue to live our lives as best we can. And serving God as best we can. So that we're ready when that day comes. Amen. So hopefully you are blessed by the word and blessed by the worship. And thanks again from Tala Family Church. God bless. Passion. Welcome to Tala Family Church. We'd like to uh, join, we'd like you to join us uh, for this time of worship and we hope that you're blessed by this time. Amen. Amen.